Appreciate you checking in. Appreciate you checking in. Prospect Report. Red McCalla Slick Shot 23. Appreciate you all checking in. Jakaya Kiki, I appreciate you checking in. My Mel Will Felton checking in. Who's Zion checking in? Al South Nas checking in. I appreciate you all checking in. Young Sauce, I see you. Uh, Official Slick Shot, I see you checking in. I appreciate you all checking in tonight. You got a lot of people joining in tonight. I appreciate it. It's great, great, great. See you. Evelyn Buck Buckets, Kalen Buck Buckets. I'm sorry, I see you checking in. The Kai 7 checking in. We have Jamia checking in, my guy. Uh, John Fisher checking in. We got Melissa Jones checking in. Olita checking in. Shane checking in. Appreciate you all checking in tonight. We have a great show tonight. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be talking candidly. We're gonna talk honestly. And tonight is a subject I think we all need to really talk about, and and not just let the streets and the kids talk amongst themselves and not have a voice. Where parents, I see plenty of parents checking in. Where parents, you can actually hear these kids talk and speak for themselves of you know uh, the things that bother them the things that are going on and you know lately the uh this the country we're, we're in a trying times very trying times and it's actually a long time coming that we all speak about so these kids can can take the torch and and have a better community than we had and I think one thing we have to do is educate them and, and allow them to talk. Um, these kids have a voice. They have, they're, they're well, they appreciate you, uh, uh, John. They're, they're more uh, educated on the world than we are just from social media alone. So we have to understand that they're more advanced today. They understand things better than we think they do. You know, I've, I've attended and watched a lot of lives and uh, people have watched a lot of my lives. And what, what you consistently see is um, adults having conversations about uh, what's going on in the world. And we really need to give that platform to our kids as well. We need to ha let, give them a platform that they can talk about and, and hear the things that they have to say. And, and understand what they say matters. Because at the end of the day, it's these kids that are gonna take um, the next step in where this country goes. And recently we've had a lot of uh, turmoil. We've had, um, as we all know, um, the passing of George Floyd at the knee of an officer, it shook the world. It shook the world and it, it demanded that we face what we have not faced any other time as much as we are right now. Um, and, and I think tonight it, it, I wanted to dedicate it to um, the kids checking in and saying how they feel and what they think about different, different parts of this. And so... I didn't want to bring in a guest. I wanted my kids to be the guests. I wanted them to talk to their peers, um, you know, because as they talk to their peers, we need to listen. Um, tonight is just having a discussion. And this, this live will be saved on my IG because it's that important. Um, we, we have all demographics here tonight. And I want to hear from some of everybody. We have black, we have white, we have high school, we have middle school, we have girls, we have boys, everyone in here that makes up our future. And, and this is important to me that we speak to these kids. Um, that's why it was so important to me tonight. Um, I'm not going to talk long. I, I really want this to be about the kids tonight. Um, and, 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 you know, I want, as I'm looking at some of the kids joining here, 
Um, I see some that I just want to ask some questions to uh, pick out and see what they have to say. Um, like, for instance, let's say Zania Williams. Uh, I would like to talk to her. Uh, Zania is a young girl, um, still in, in, in the younger grades, eighth, you know, seventh grade. Uh, going to seventh grade, um, you know, and, and these are the ages that they're really influenced by. So what I want to do now is bring in uh, Zaniah and just kind of ask her a question or two and see, let's see if we can get Zanaya in. Talk to the kids tonight. It's about them. So please stay tuned as we bring Zanaya Williams in. Hi. Hi, Zaniah. How you doing? I'm good. Doing good? How's everything? Great. It's great. You know, and, you know, I, I chose you because you're, you're our future. You're our younger generation that we look up to, that we know are going to take our kids, um, you know, the next generation to take the baton. So we want to hear your perspective and, and, and about some things. So, you know, let's jump right in it here. I know you, as well as, you know, all of the country has, has watched um, what happened to George Floyd with the officer, right? Yeah. Um, just from your perspective, I want you to give, and, and Zaniah is, how old are you, Zaniah? I'm 11. It's, she's 11. So at 11 years old, this lets us know that as young as her is being uh, affected and know what's going on in the world. So I want to ask you, um, with all this, you know, all the, everything that's going on with the protesting and, and the rioting and all the, all of these people are upset over what happened to George Floyd. How has that made you feel? And why do you think all of that is happening? This has made me feel like we shouldn't be treated differently because of our color and how we look, that shouldn't be like, you shouldn't treat anybody different because of how they look, that's wrong. God says in the Bible that you should love everybody and just have, like how Christ loves us. And I think this is happening because all the protesting and things are happening because of a white cop killed George Floyd and how not just that, but how we are being treated because of our color. Now, now a question I got. So, when you saw it, did it, did it, did it make you feel angry? Did it make you feel sad? What did you feel when you actually watched the video? I was very upset. You were upset. Yes. Explain to everybody how, how, how upset you were and, and exactly why. I was upset because, like, we, I feel like it's everything, we should, it should be equal. Like, we shouldn't be treated differently because of our color. No, yeah. And, like, for a cop to, like, keep doing that to somebody who was calling for his mom that he didn't that was just he had to put really force into his neck to kill him like that and that's just wrong that's wrong right um well you know Zanaya, i appreciate you coming in and and giving your perspective because there's other little kids your age that may be feeling how they feel and are afraid to talk or you know don't know exactly what to say or how they're supposed to feel so I appreciate you coming in and letting everybody know exactly how you feel, all right? Yes, thank, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate you. No problem. Um, that, that's 11-year-old Zaniah there. Um, you know, it, it comes from a child, but we all know that, you know, what she's saying is, is how it should be. And that's coming from the, from the mouth of a child. But I want to... I want to check in with someone else and, and, and get their perspective. We got, you know, from, from 11 year old Zaniah Williams, um, young lady. So let's look at someone else. Maybe we can get 
to come in and, and maybe answer the same question, but maybe a different graphic. We have my guy, Red Dunton. Red, Oops. how you doing, brother? Doing good. How about yourself? Good to see you. Good to see you. You're howling the, the, the coronavirus uh, quarantine all right? I'm doing all right. I hope you're doing well, too. Doing well? Good, good. Well, I appreciate you uh, checking in tonight. And again, we want to get everybody's perspective. So, you know, tonight I wanted to bring you in because, you know, you're a very popular guy. Everybody loves Red and, and so forth. But I wanted to, I wanted to hear from your, your view um, with, with the rioting and protests. And the same question I gave her, you know, how did it make you feel and, and why you think all of this is happening? Yeah, so obviously, you know, just the video of George Floyd, I watched the video myself. I mean, I'm going to be honest, like, I just made me kind of my stomach, you know? Not even, not everybody's supposed to be, everybody's supposed to die to go out like that, especially in that sort of situation. I think it's just really inappropriate. But uh, so I'll say as far as protesting goes, you know, I really feel like it's really inspirational to me, and I honestly feel like it's really needed. Uh, I love the way people are voicing their with what's going on with social justice issues. I mean, I think it's important for everybody to use their right to speak and, you know, not shy away from speaking on the issue at all. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to use my voice as much as I can, you know. Uh, I don't think it should be just on the dust. I think it's something we should highlight and really just be okay with talking about. Uh, as far as the riots go, I'm not going to say I agree with them, but I completely understand why they're doing them and why people are really angry. And I understand why they're responding the way they are. So I don't blame them for doing that. Yeah, yeah, no. And I think a lot of people take that position of may not approve of what they're doing, but we totally understand why they're doing it. You know, your generation has the opportunity um, to make a change. Now, do, do you feel like your generation has a voice in this, or do you think it's just the, the adults trying to take over and so forth, or do you think you have a voice in this? Uh, absolutely, I think we have a voice. Um, at the end of the day, if you want change, you can speak on as much as you want, but at the same time, you got to act on it. And I think that goes for not only the youth, but adults. And as a group collectively, if we're going to see change, we have to act on it. And uh, I really do want to be a small part in making sure that change happens. And I'm going to do my voice as much as I can. Yeah. Now, what are some ideas of how you, um, because how old are you now? Uh, I just turned 17. Rich. 17. So you got, you know, uh, another year before you turn 18 and vote. So, I, I mean, there's, how do you, your generation as high schoolers feel like you can get someone to listen? Well, actually, I'm going to use an example of one of my good friends, Justin Bell. I saw he did his duty and uh, Clay set up his own peaceful protest. He had thousands of people come out to speak on. And, I mean, he just did that with a tweet. Like, people came out to talk about the issue. And honestly, it kind of inspired me. And I really was really happy to see somebody our age, you know, do something with that kind of platform. You know, just really kind of just take it to the next level for our Really? What? I, I didn't know Justin did that. What What did he do? Uh, I remember uh, I seen seen the tweet, and it basically him and then like people from the school were all shouting it out. And not even a few days later, they had a peaceful protest going on right mm. here, in Clayton, and they had mm. some and it was just, it was really cool to see. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. And I and and again, one reason I wanted you on is to to tell people how. You know, we got other young folks on here that don't know exactly, well, what what can I do? How can I make a difference? And yeah. I think voicing your, you know, your your yourself and, and coming up with ideas like Justin did will make a difference because it, it it's up to you guys. And I can't stress that enough to you, Red. It's up to your generation to help move us forward. No you know, I... When I was in high school, it was a totally different world. And and for my kids, I got hope that kids like you will lead the way. For sure. You got me? I appreciate you so much for being on here tonight, man. So glad to be here. I really appreciate thank, it. Th you, thank you so much again. And um, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Again, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for having me, Coach. Take care. All right. All right, brother.
Real good talking. You too. Um, and, and there we had um, another young man, Red Dutton, who, you know, eloquently put it, you know, they have to, they have to be heard. They need to be heard. They should be heard. Um, you know, a lot of the lawmakers are older people and, and out of touch with what today is. These, ki these kids are today. And, you know, I just asked him, you know, about his voice. Um, so I, I got another kid. Let me, let me see if I want to find a, someone else I can ask that same question because I love getting, and let me get, um, let me see, let me get, um, let me get John Fisher to send me a request. I, I want to, I'm seeing kids pop up here and uh, different questions I have. I want to get their perspective and have them to, to speak about it because if we don't have them speak about it, we'll never know how they feel. And so far you were able to hear how two kids felt um, that came from two totally different um, backgrounds, two different demographics, two different races, two ages, uh, two different genders. Um, but what we're seeing is a common theme amongst our young folks that it's up to them that they, they want this change. And, and if, if we're going to make this change, it's going to start with them, you know, and, and we have to be willing to understand they are the future. Let's see. I'm going to try to bring in another young man and kind of get his perspective on it. And this, again, tonight's not about me. It's about these kids here. And we have my man, John Fisher. I'm about to bring him in. John, how you doing, my brother? I'm doing good, doing good. I appreciate you joining the live tonight and talking to uh, our audience tonight. We have parents, we have coaches, we have kids, your peers, we have kids younger than you. And, and we wanted to have this conversation and give you kids uh, a voice to speak about how you feel and, and all that's going on. So I want to ask you, um, as your age, and I know we talked a little bit uh, before, um, how do you feel or do you feel your age group has a voice? And if you do have a voice, how do you plan to use it? Well, I feel like we have many different options, many different voices inside of us that we just don't use because we have a lot of different opportunities, just like everybody else. We all have our social media. We all have different outlets, different platforms. We can voice it, have marches, have different protests, even though some of the protests I don't agree with, I, it does, it does make sense why they're doing it. They're doing it for a cause, but really we have a lot of different options. And one of the biggest options that we have is social media. Social media just allows us to like really bring ourselves together and just like, like allows us to really be out there. No, that, that's, and that's everybody He's everything once it gets out there, like, so unless you unpost it, it still might get brought up over and over and repost it over and over and over again. So social media is like one of the biggest things that we use today to uh, allow us to, um, to allow us to voice our opinions. And then also we just go out and voice our opinions to our friends and just keep having the words spread over and over again. Our voices can be heard. It's just if we want to let our voices be heard. No, I think you brought up a great point right there um, that we don't talk about too much is kids have conversations amongst themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody in that group um, needs to get that conversation started and, and yeah. kind of – go ahead, go ahead. It all depends on one person. Like one person can really spark something. Yeah, no, Just absolutely. We had MLK, we had, um, we had MLK, we had Maya Angelou, we had um, names like, big as that, that one person sparked the whole revolution in right. our black community, and one person sparked our revolution to creating this country. Yeah. It, yeah. it takes one person to really speak up to make everything else get bigger and bigger, and then everybody just follows that one person. It's just like a leader following the leader, so. Yeah, I, I remember on a, uh, a previous live, you mentioned that 
if I'm correct, that you had a birthday coming up, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. July yeah. 26 is. Okay. Well, um, you talked about that one of the first things you were going to do was vote. One of the first things I'm going to do is vote, and then I'm going to get baptized on that day, too. I want to get myself to the Lord because I feel like I need to renew myself. I feel like it's time for that big change in my life because I'm about to grow up and be an adult and getting into my senior year and at Word of God Christian Academy, I've had a long road. Shout out to Coach uh, Shane Black. Co shout outs to Coach Byron Williams. Shout outs to Coach Craig. All y'all, all shout outs to you too. All y'all really helped me grow as a person, as a uh, young man, and just helped me become better and just growing in my thought process, IQ, basketball, on and off the court. Y'all helped me got, grow as a person. And I can't really can't thank y'all enough, really. Well, I forget where I came from. No matter if I'm famous or not, I'm never gonna forget this. Yeah. How how much y'all let me like do what I can do? Like y'all help like show me like brought confidence into me. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. That means a lot. Uh, we work hard for you, young fellas. You know, and yeah. we know the world can be ugly, and there's a lot of bad things out there. And it's so true. You, so you, true. And, and all we can do is try to help guide you. You know what I mean? Sir, all we can do is just keep keep praying, keep going on day by day, and just try to put our best foot forward. Well, I want to tell you, John, I'm, I'm proud of you. I appreciate Thank you. you coach. And, and you've known forever. I've always told you, along with your, your, your teammates, whenever you need me, don't hesitate to be in my inbox. You you yes, know sir. I you know I hear from you. I got your back too. I'm most definitely. I told you like last live. I'm going to vote. I like this this year is crucial because we can't have what happened like what happened at the start of the year and finish out the year honestly because what happened at the beginning of the year just like everybody was thinking 2020 was that was that year that everything was like. Yeah. Like everything was not like this year has shown us a lot of different things that needs to be brought up. No, I, I'm glad you reckon it's a very humbling year. Um, and and again, John, I appreciate you checking in tonight. If there's yes, anything sir. we can do for you, my man, please don't hesitate to hit me yes, up. Yes, sir. I got you, coach. Thank All you, right. coach. Love, I love you. Thank I you. love you too, my brother. Take care. Take care. Um, uh, you know, those are the situations that, that why this live was important. Um, I need the young folks to know we care. We love you and we hear you. Um, we can't keep treating these conversations as if they're adult conversations. They are everyone's conversations. These are the kids that have to get along and love each other and, and respect each other and like John said, how you talk when you're amongst your peers, right? Uh, that's important. That, I think that may, that, that's more, even, even to me, more important than social media posts because you can be whoever you want to be on social media, but the people around you, they know when, when nobody's looking and those filters off, this is the real you. And it's then that matters and, and how you respond. I'm, I'm going to bring in another young lady. Um, um, I respect a lot, love her to death. Um, I want to get her perspective. I'm going to try to bring in here. Let's see. Um, I see Zamaria Jones. Let's see if we can get her in here um, and see where we got. Zamaria. Hey. How you doing, young lady? Good. Good. It's good to see you. How's everything been going? It's going good. It's going good. Um, I know you you've been listening to the live here and the conversation we have, and and you know how the you know the George Floyd situation has affected uh, everyone. But switching gears a little bit with you, right? Um, because I wanted everybody to have a voice here, and I don't want anything to be taboo or we don't want to talk about because these are real situations that people go through. So with you uh, being a biracial kid with an African-American dad and a Caucasian mom, you have 
been able to see the world differently than just one side or the other, right? So I, I wanted to ask you, has there ever been a situation that you can think of that has made you, where you felt like racism was a, a part of the issue, whether it be from one side or the other, or it made you uncomfortable? Um, and if so, um, how did it make you feel? Okay, yes. Um, I have, like when I'm talking, I have a conversation with my friends and they say something or make a statement about white people or make a statement about black people and they be like, they look at me and be like, oh, but yeah, you're different. I'm not talking about you, but in reality, mm. you're all because I am half white and I am black. So I am, I am part of the problem or not part of the problem, but I am part of it. And yeah. it makes me comfortable because you are talking about me, I am half white and is, are we not when we come to race, we're not that different. I mean, we but together we just all black lives matter. I mean, all lives matter. We're just not black, just not white. All lives matter. Yeah, yeah. So, have have you know? Have you ever felt like you had to choose, or if you were with one side of the, you know, your friends or other side, or you know, because I know I, I've had biracial friends that would tell me, you know, to my white friends I, I you know they say i act black to so my black friends they say i act white have you ever been kind of in that situation no i don't think i have yeah that that's that's good and and that shows me that your generation is starting to get it you know what i mean and and honestly i think because your generation and a couple of ages above you because you get it that's why we're starting to have this change. That's why this revolution is going on. So in, in your mind, to, to keep from hearing the things that they've said to you, what are some of the things that maybe um, we can do to help keep from kids from feeling, you know, what you feel? Like kids, that, like uh, other biracial kids. I think we should just speak up. Like, don't, don't hold back your opinion. Can't nobody say your opinion Wrong or what you think is wrong. I mean, what you think is what you think. Okay, mm -hmm. nobody just express your express yourself. Don't hold back. No, that's great advice. That's great advice. I'm, I'm I'm hoping my parents are listening tonight because we sometimes let emotions or years of uh, of opinionated feelings get in the way of speaking like you are right now. Um, before I let you go, I do have one more question. So. When, when you watched the video of, of George Floyd, like, like we did, how did it make you feel? And what do you think we all should learn from that? It made me feel uncomfortable because, I mean, he, he really wasn't doing nothing. He was sitting there driving with the police. He wasn't doing nothing. And he was still on his neck. So like, if you look at that video, I think nothing wrong. I mean, I think you're part of the problem because if you, don't, if you look at that video, wrong with that, it's a problem. That was definitely something wrong with that video. Right. And see, I think you said something that it doesn't matter whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Asian. If you didn't see something wrong with that video, then then there's a problem other than just there. there's a human problem. You know what I mean? Because a life was just taken right in front of us. And I think I think you hit it on the head. My girl, Z, I appreciate you checking in. Uh, you know, I always love to hear from you. You're not, you're not my average eighth going to ninth, ninth grade. You're, you're very well versed, very mature for your age. And we're counting on you. We're counting on you to help lead this nation. You got me? Got you. All right. I appreciate you checking in with us tonight, baby girl. Me too. All right. Bye-bye. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're getting to hear from our kids and and i can't tell you how proud i am of these kids to speak um i think so many are afraid to speak um because they don't want to be judged some are afraid to speak because adults make them feel like they're inadequate uh, their opinion doesn't matter and that was the reason i wanted to have this tonight because it does matter at the end of the day, it really does matter. And and again, this live is all about them. And and uh, I I got let me let me pick somebody else. I want to hear uh, what they got to say because um, this ain't about me tonight. 
Um, okay, let's try my man, Will Felton. Will Felton. Will. What's up, Coach? How you doing, my brother? How's everything? Pretty good. Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad. I'm glad you checked in for us. Um, you being uh, a high-profile kid, for those that don't know, Mr. Will felt oh, is very popular on that basketball court, uh, <laughs> and, and a very humble and nice young man. Um, I guess a question I wanted to ask you was, you know. I grew up and saw some things because I'm a little older, but most of the protesting and rioting on this scale that we're seeing today, y'all pretty much saw in books and movies and things like that. You know, you just hear about it. So how does it feel to actually be able to experience all this social injustice going on? You know, it's like, it's crazy. You don't think it'll like happen to you, but like, like going in the stores, you know, having to like look around, having to like look behind you because you think someone's watching you. I think that's that's like crazy, and I hate that it takes like an African American getting killed to get attention. I think that's terrible, but um, I think it's important that we uh, you know, don't don't just like make it a trend, make it like a movement, like mm. stick with it, don't forget about it. I think that's mm. important. No, that's a great point, man. And that's, that was always my fear. And, you know, that this would be something temporary. And, you know, once the, you know, the virus went down and things start opening, people start forgetting and, and letting it go away. But I think me having seen a lot of these situations, I ain't gonna say a lot, but several situations where this kind of blew up before, this feels different. And I think it feels different more because more young folks like yourself are involved. And that is important for us. You know, um, I think actually I saw I, the reason I wanted to talk to you was I, I saw on social media that you and some of your, I think your teammates, uh, and I think, right, was it teammates or friends or somebody I saw you with that were. Okay. Yeah. I so y'all go ahead. So I wasn't I wasn't able to make it out there, but my teammates from Millbrook and just other like students and staff were out there, and I really like I support what they did. It makes me proud to be like a part of the program because I saw mm -hmm. like um, Rashid Williams, our coach, Coach Rise. He like mm -hmm. made a speech about like living like that and like what it's like with his son growing up in this type of country, and I think that was really important to hear. No, I, and that, that says a lot um, for Coach to, to have those conversations and say that speech and have the team go out there as, as a unit. And, and you know, again, you know, uh, it's, again, it's really you know, up to you guys to lead the way, you know what I mean? And, and understand that your voice counts. Your voice matters. Your voice will be heard um, because at the end of the day, uh, it's not long. Are, are you 18 yet? It's got to be coming soon, right? Uh, my birthday's in January 9th, but I'm 17 right now. 17. So less than a year, you'll be, you know, eligible to vote. And, and, and also, and so some may say, well, you, you're getting ready to vote in January. You're going to miss the presidential election. Let me just tell you this. Every year there are elections that are important. The local elections... And the state elections are just as important, if not more yeah. important, than just the presidency. All right? So don't just think yes, because sir. you're going to miss the presidential election that your election votes don't matter. They're, they're very important. Um, Will, I appreciate you coming in, my brother. Uh, you're always welcome. You're, you're, you're a, I'm a fan. I love you to death. You're such a a humble and well-respectable young man. Keep doing that and, and help lead my country once I'm gone. All right? Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Um, you know, again, I, hearing these kids talk is, is exactly um, what I needed to hear. I, I want to hear how they think. Um, I don't, I don't want to tell them what they should do and what they should feel and what they should say, 
I need to hear them first and hear them and then educate them if, if you know, they have their information wrong. Um, not judge. We, we got to stop judging these kids. We're in a whole different era. We're in a whole different uh, time in our country. And, and um, the thoughts and the feelings that we had, and this, it doesn't matter whether it's blacks or whites. It, it doesn't matter. We all are one, and we have to stop using these judgmental thoughts that we had as kids coming up and understand that it doesn't matter whether it's a black guy or a white guy with a knee on his neck, that that's unacceptable, right, for anybody. And, and that's important. And, and one reason um, I want to have these, so I, I've had a couple of high school boys. I'm going to see if I can bring in maybe a high school girl here and, and get her perspective. So let's see if we can bring in my girl, Jamia. Let's see. Here she goes. There's my girl. What's how up? you doing, Jamia? Good, how are you? Good, good. You know, I, um, I'm always happy to see you. Uh, you know, I, you, you may not know this, but I look at you sometime and I say, man, time <laughs> has fly. I mean, I, I, I mean, it was just yesterday I went over to East Garner to watch you play for the first time. And I know you probably get tired of me saying it, but it's just amazing to me because it literally seemed like not too long ago. You know what I mean? I'm about and, to go to <laughs> and you're about to go to college. And I was just, you were just getting ready to go to high school last year. I swear it was just last year, right? So, so now you're getting ready to go to college. And, and you know, which is, that's, that's where a lot of reform happens as well. A lot of change happens with the college students because they yeah. have a big voice. They are, a, they are important in their voice and their votes. And so I want to ask you, you know, Sports, you know, basketball, whatever it is, sports has always been able to bring um, people from different races, different demographics, social economic. It's always been a hub for right. where people get along and, and so forth, teammates. Do you think with, with the way things are, are right now that um, there will be any type of racial tension that will affect the sport? Or do you think that, you know, those sports – are going to continue to be the melting pot for different races? I think, I don't think anything's going to change the sports because people are still going to come watch the games. It don't matter what sport it is. Um, but I think sports has something to do with it. Like Colin Kaepernick, how he started the movement and stuff. And since the George Floyd situation, I think it like woke up people. Like they're aware of the racial tensions of what's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's important. So let me ask you, how did you feel when you saw the George Floyd video? How did it make you feel? I was mad and then I was like sad because no way I made it die like that, like over a fake, fake money. Like that's just really unnecessary. I don't think that's right at all. Um, I think the cops should have handled it uh, differently. Instead of the, and first of all, the dude that put his knee on his neck, I mm -hmm. other cops didn't say anything about him doing that when he right. said, right. this thing, like, you're doing something wrong. And the fact that there's still cops mm -hmm. after, they already had situations before that with black people, and they still let them be cops. I don't think that's right. So, mm. yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, and I think a lot of the debate today is about police reform because those bad cops that, that do those, they, they got to stop letting them get away with it and continue to do it and, and you know, and start to uh, weed out the bad apples, as they say. Now, again, you're going into college. Your generation is a very important generation. So what role do you see your generation playing in, in the change of this country? Um, I think our, well, my generation as millennials, I think social media has a part. Also, like, for myself, I've been going, I'm going to a predominantly white institution, and 
Um, well, my part, I can just treat everybody the same, treat how I want to be treated. Like, I don't care if you're white, Mexican, don't matter. I'm going to treat you like my, one of my friends. I'm just not that type. Because I think everybody equal, everybody's fair. So. No, I, I appreciate that perspective. And, and if you can continue to spread that, that message, you know, and help lead my country. That's, that's, you know, it's, it's a great place to, to be if we all can get on the same page and respect each other and love each other. And, and I think your gener honestly, I think your generation is the difference. I really do. Um, can't things get better? Will it happen overnight? No, no. but the transition, uh, I think from, from my generation, the next generation to your generation, I think by the time it gets to you, if, if your generation continues to stand up and not stand for any of these uh, injustices, we'll start seeing a difference in, in how things are done. And I appreciate you coming on tonight because it was really important to have you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You know I got you. <laughs> yeah, no question. That's my girl. Thank you, Jamia. Thank you. Um, you know, I just love these kids, um, again, just watching her grow up, uh, so quickly, um, so quickly, um, but feeling hope when I hear them talk and, and, and the things they say and the maturity they have, um, the perspectives they have, um, I, I'm going, I got time for one more. Let me see if I can get my girl on here i want to get one more young lady on here let me see if i can find uh i think i saw her earlier so i'm gonna you know let's see if we can bring my girl in i'm gonna ask her just like i asked her. hey mr lamont how you doing turn it this way for me oh i'm sorry That's not, there we go <laughs> okay, all right. I see you got your hair done, looking all good tonight. How's everything? You doing all right? Yes, sir. What about you? I'm doing well, doing well. I appreciate you tuning in tonight. Um, it, you know, again, as I think about what we're going through, I, I want to hear from kids that I feel are are, are very strong-minded, are leaders, um, well-educated, um, and and you're you come to mind for me. Um, I've always watched your leadership. I, I have from a distance, um, not just how I think what I look at when I watched you on the basketball floor was your leadership. Even when you, when you weren't the leading score, the leading score respected you, you know what I mean? Because you have that natural leadership. And I'm, I, I'm so thankful again, that people like you are, are going to lead this country. So I'm going to ask you, like I asked Jamia, you know, sports has always been uh, the one place that have brought so many um, different demographics together the, in socioeconomic status, was the poor, the black and white. All the races have always, you know, that one place has at least been basketball or, or football or sports. Do you think in the, in the you know, the, the, the space we're in as a country now, do you think that would affect you know, sports in any type of way, like with Rachel's racial tension, or you think sports is going to continue being that hook? Um, that's, I mean, that's a really good question. If I had to think, if I had to speak or answer this question, my personal, just my personal experience, my point of view, um, I mean, I would say it, it, it will continue to bring people together. Um, you know, uh, I, just to give an example, my made up, uh, we have a few white girls on our team, you know, and um, we've been able to house, you know, as out things like that, and every time we've been able to come, to, um, no problems. I usually, you know, take in those workouts until they have anyone they have no problem following this. Mm. Oh, you went, you went mute on me. Hold on, you went mute on me. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Say that again. I, I well, heard, I heard a point that I wanted to hear. Did say that again? I would say, um, yeah, like if I just spoke from my personal bubble, yes, um, because, you know, we were just able to come together, things like that. But at the same time, I don't feel like it's that simple because the athletic community is made up of different levels. 
So I feel like the professionals are going to handle it different than collegiate athletes. And the collegiate athletes will handle it different than amateur or younger athletes. And, um, you know, if you if we think about it, professionals, they have more experience with it. So, yes, they are going to have stronger opinions. Um, and, I mean, with the aspect, you know, they have been in their communities trying to give back, trying to educate the youth, things like that. And in that aspect, it is unifying. But at the same time, we see, like, Jania brought up the um, Colin Kaepernick situation. And with that, you can tell, you know, their their jobs are on the lines when it comes to these opinions. So, mm-hmm. you know, and it's hard for them because the world is watching. And you have people who, you know, like Drew, Drew Brees who made the comments that he did. So it's kind of hard with that. Um, and that, that can build racial tension. You know, co- collegiate athletes, they're just mm-hmm. trying to keep their scholarship. So, you know, if they can't really do too much with that, because maybe their coach or their team doesn't agree. And then when it comes to, like, people my age, yes, we may have more leeway. We may, we may not lose a job over our opinions, but, you know, um, we're, some of us are trying to stay, chase those scholarships so we're in fear of losing them. We don't want to come, you know, doing too much with our opinion as well. So it can build racial tension at each level. Mm. But I do feel like at the same time, the thing that unifies us all is, like, the influence that we have on each other. So, um you know, I feel like I feel like easily that could change with kind of the change of our mindset. Like instead of having the job to just feel or speak on solely what we know, have the job to like learn, you know, just just to learn, you know, from each other. Um, maybe think about why certain races are being affected. Why certain, you know, why my teammate feels this way. Why, um, you know, why is certain things significant? What is going on other than just what I live or just what I see? And I think mm-hmm. that simple change of mindset, if um, just something as simple as that can make the difference, that can bring, you know, the athletic community together. And I mean, and it can happen at any level. Yes, the pros, if we see that from the pros, we'll be more inclined, more inclined to do that. But I think even if we just find it within ourselves, the people around us, the people older than us, it would just we're going to grow and be in that position and eventually so it can, um, you know, just build up the ladder as well. So, I mean, I feel like the answer to that question just summed up is, is, it's within us. It's within our mindset. No, that, 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 <laughs> that says a lot. Um, I think you hit the, uh, the, the point exactly. Bullseye. I mean, and, and more people can take that advice from you because, I couldn't have said it better myself, you know, um, just, just, just to get your opinion. Cause I like to, I like to hear how, how kids feel or felt when they saw that video, mm-hmm. when you saw that video of, of George Floyd dying under there, how did it make you feel? I mean, a, a lot of emotions, honestly, like I was angry. Um, I, I was I was saddened, you know, that's somebody's dad, that's somebody's son, you know, somebody's brother, like that's this a family member and I I don't even know him, you know, and he, it touched my heart, you know, it's a it's a family type thing though. I feel like the black community, we are a family. So, you know, just seeing that it just made me sad and it also made it made me scared for the people who are in my family. So like he, you know, um just for the fact that their lives are threatened, they could be doing nothing. Like they, you know, they could easily be killed and, you know, they, the police is, I mean, the police are, you know, being like, go for it. So they could be killed with no justice for doing nothing. So really, you know, sad, scared, angry. And I mean, confusing. I honestly, I know this is like, this has happened before. This is not the first death. Like this is not the first murder by police that has been unjusted. So you know, it's definitely um, not something I haven't seen before, but it, you know, it's still sad. It's still really scary and really made me angry about it. No, I, I'm glad you shared that. And and I I could listen to you all night because you're the voice I've been looking for. Like I've been listening to and and I wanted to hear um, just the, the, you know, you're, you're older now. You're getting ready to move on to college <laughs> soon. It won't be long and you're going to be voted you know, a voting soon and, and those type of things. But when I hear you talk, I hear leadership. I hear the next generation saying, Lamont, I got you, right? Oh That's God. special to me. That's special to me, I right? See. That's why I wanted people like you on. Y'all mean so much to me. You're the reason I do this. 
to, to watch you grow up and and become a young lady that that is well educated, well versed on on the issues that's going on because this world is bigger than basketball. And I know we right. hashtag big, bigger than basketball all the time, but it really is. And you can play basketball to the best of your ability. Right. You don't understand this world. Exactly. You understand what I mean? Yes. So yes. it's important that you understand the climate that we live in and help change it. That, right. That's what that's what I'm asking of you, and I I appreciate you so much checking in tonight. You you know I love you to death. Y'all look at you, here again, just like I said with Jamil, man. You little girls, were little babies, not too long <laughs> ago, and now I'm looking at you know these are the ones that I'm gonna be voting for myself one day. You know, <laughs> so I appreciate you so much for checking in, Raven. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Um, I hope you all were able to take some perspectives away from these young people. Um, they, they, they gave their voice, they lent their time, they took the, the, just the, just the fact that they would get on here and speak. That means they care. That means they, they, they love us. They love their peers, they love this country, they love, they want equality, that's it. We just had a great group of kids on here tonight. And, and again, this is what it was for me. This is what I needed to hear, to be encouraged that, that all is not lost. All is not lost. I appreciate you all checking in. This will be posted. Have your kids watch it. Understand it's okay to feel what they feel and talk about what they want to talk about. Don't just, just listen. All right. I think sometimes we put whether it's black issues or white issues or being biracial, we have a tendency to make it taboo and not, not talk about it. It's not a, it's not a dirty situation. We, as a society grew up and, and it became dirty. It shouldn't be dirty because we're all one. But society made it dirty. We got to clean it up. And if we're going to clean it up, you just, you just listen to the people that are going to clean it up. You just listen to the future. I appreciate you all so much for checking in tonight. I hope you took something away from this. Maybe a, a kid gave a perspective uh, or, or gave um, their opinion or their feelings. And if nothing else, take and have a conversation with your child or your neighbor's child. Have those conversations so we can continue to work toward making this place what it was intended to be. It should be. Okay? Thank you so much for checking in tonight. I, I will see you all next week. Again, I love you all and I appreciate you. Thank you.